Good morning, it is Tuesday, July 30th, and I'm going to make an attempt to go into school right now and just begin to put things back together in my room after the carpets were cleaned. Today I'm going to start thinking about what I'm going to do with everything this year. <laughs> So the first thing that I did was just kind of set up my desks how I had them last year. I mostly had them in groups of four. And although I have talked about on my classroom culture video that I do, you know, student design seating charts, I am going to play around a little bit with flexible seating this year as far as, you know, do a lot of different random groupings with my students. But I still might let incorporate students designing seating charts as well. So not sure how that's gonna go, but using the resource Open Up Math, they definitely have a lot of partner talk, a lot of table collaboration, so it's good to um, shake things up for them and give them different partners all the time. Okay, so the purpose behind why I situate the desks in groups of four like this is really for optimal viewing of the screen projector area. Um, unfortunately, we only have one area right now in the room my dream would be to have it on both sides of the room so there is no front of the room. But having the desks in this configuration basically means that there's only two students in the room that kind of aren't facing front or at an angle to see the board. So my co-teacher Mary Dooms came up with that, was really smart. And so I looked at my class list yesterday and of course these might change. But as of right now, the largest class that I have is 26 students. So I set up my room for 26. And then I like to have an extra desk over here just because I don't like my teacher desk too clogged up. And then I like to put like little extra stuff here. Plus if I'm ever working one-on-one -on -one during homeroom with a student, we can work back in this area. So that's nice. And then I have an extra table here. I have a co-teacher two periods a day. So this is, can be her home base or if we work with a small group. I used to have some seating in my room like a glider rocker. I'll just show you that in a minute. But I'm gonna get rid of this stuff because I know it's not fireproof. And if we are going to be getting flexible seating in the next year or two, I need to change that anyway. My other teaching partner down the hall is piloting flexible seating this year, so I'm really excited to see what her room looks like. And I'll probably go in there and give you a sneak peek of what her room looks like in the future. So what I'm picturing for this area back here is to be for my classroom YouTube channel and also to be for small group instruction. When my co-teacher and I are both simultaneously parallel teaching, one of us will go back here and work on the board with students, and then the other teacher will work on the main board up there. But I wanna use it during lunchtime to be that area where students could maybe be recording tutorials. Um, so you can see I have some flexible seating here that I'm gonna get rid of, just some odds and ends that I had you know, when I had my children at home and the glider rocker I got for free on Facebook, but I know none of these are fireproof, so I'm gonna be getting rid of those, so I don't wanna have that in the classroom anymore. So, and then I also have an extra filing cabinet. Basically, I'm just gonna send an email out to our staff, just saying free, pick it up in my room. This is the doorway students come in, and I always stand in the door to greet them. And I like to have this area right here just as a sign-in area for going to the bathroom in the hall, wherever they're gonna go. There'll be passes hung there and they have to sign in and sign out, so that's a good place to have the hand sanitizer, right? And then also below here in the desk, I have applications for them to apply for classroom jobs, and that's always handy. Um, if you ever watched my Day in the Life of a Middle School Teacher video, you'll know that this area right here is my set for when I record things after school or before school. And these are all personal items from home uh, and some things that students made me. So I like this little area right here, so I don't have to do anything about that. But let's talk about bulletin boards. My other plan for this whole big, long two bulletin boards in a row for this year is to have a living anchor chart. Um, someone did that with Open Up Resources, one of the lead learners. Um, her name is Morgan Stipe, and she just kept adding on for each unit. So hers is just like she covered a bulletin board with white paper. I'm going to do a little bit differently because we're out of white paper. But I do have large chart paper, like sticky note things that you can rip off. So I think I'll keep them towards the front of the room as we're working on a unit. 
and then add it onto the living anchor chart wall. And, and my goal is to really do this with each class period, you know, maybe in a brainstorming kind of fashion, but then I will already have in mind how I want the anchor chart to look, you know, with different colors and everything and pretty it up. But yeah, so my bulletin boards will be totally empty when our sixth graders come in. I think it's really fun when they're in middle school to be able to put up their own work right away and then to help with creating the bulletin board. So for now, this is just going to be blank. That's ready, ready to go. Also what I did is I moved things that was over on the bulletin board over here. This is effective effort, about the six steps in effective effort. And I just moved it over here to my blue wall as well as my growth mindset poster right here. So um, doesn't look like I did that much. If you look around the room, I really just arranged the furniture and then started to go. I locked everything in my desk in my cupboard, so I started to empty all that out and think of how I want to reorganize this here. So I've been here two hours. I chatted a little bit. I saw a couple teachers and really want to work a lot on my teacher area this year. So just kind of going through and organizing that. And then thinking about the first day of school, I'll probably start thinking about that next week. I start back on August 16th, but I have a lot going on in between then, so I wanna get ready. And that's about it for now. Okay, now for my desk area. This is like the messiest area in my room, even though I've got a lot of organization still to do. So it's just figuring out how I want it to be. This is just an area that I'm at during homeroom and maybe another hour or so a day. Um, I don't really sit behind here too much, but I want to make it efficient for me and my needs. So here goes. Something new that I want to do this year behind me, you can see I have a pocket chart. I have two different pocket charts, one for my standard math class and one for my advanced. And instead of just putting words up as we encounter different vocabulary words, I'm going to have two columns this year. It's something I learned at my training at the Hive Conference for Open Up Resources. And we talked a little bit about receptive and productive vocabulary. So I'm definitely going to do a video on that. but. Somehow I'm going to make two columns right here and I'll do a receptive side and a productive side. So as we introduce new vocabulary on our living anchor chart, then I'll have a student make a card, I think, and then we'll move it over to productive because in Open Up Math, they're now going to tell us at which point in that unit or which lesson they should now be using that productively. Ingenious. Okay, since this is only day one of just kind of you know, launching into the classroom thing. These are the geometry toolkits that I'll use for both of my levels of math, and they're a mess from last year, so I will have to go through and organize them, and then I'll talk more about what goes, what goes into each one for unit one. It's geometry for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade is unit one. 